Good evening. My name's Hannah Levine. You've got tuned to Seek and Destroy here on KEXP in Seattle. I am so glad to have these guys in the studio. This is Helms Lee. <laughs> Thank you. 
You're listening to Helms Ali playing here in the KXP studios, sharing new songs from their album Sleepwalking Sailors. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. Very lovely to have you here. Um, so I admire a lot of different things about your band, but one of the things that I've always really appreciated is that you're each individually very strong players and vocalists in your own right. But there's something that happens when you come together as a trio that you always feel larger than the sum of your parts, if you will. Um, which really makes me curious about your writing process and how things kind of come together for you. Can you tell me a little bit about writing this new album and how that how you assembled the pieces together? I would say uh, mainly randomly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's not a whole lot of calculation or you know, division of duties or you know. Um, Really well thought <laughs> at all. We don't use our heads. When we're oh, I see. Well, <laughs> you, you've done very well for yourself for not thinking about it at all. <laughs> um, well, I would imagine. So, like, do things start out improv and jam like, and then they coalesce, or it just seems like your arrangements are pretty thoughtful and deliberate. There's got to be, you got to think about it a little. Well, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't start out that way. I yeah. guess um, us- usually. Uh, uh, can I, a riff idea or something will interrupt a conversation about something or other and then um, if somebody else thinks that uh, one of those riffs sounds interesting then they'll throw their two cents in and then I mean usually just kind of happens pretty quick um, and yeah once we start working on something then yeah we're, we're counting out parts and talking about how things could fit together but uh, I don't know yeah it all feels like a blur at the end of it. I know that we have some natural process and we do communicate and use our brains, but <laughs> when it's when it's finished, it feels like it wrote itself. It just feels like that song just happened. That's great. Well, you're very fortunate that way. It's you know, you know that that your craft can be that enjoyable and doesn't require you to split yourselves into a million pieces trying to agree on everything. Um, can you tell me a little bit about working with Chris Common? This is is this the first time you've worked with Chris? And, and yeah, producing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, doing a record for us. Yeah, he um, Chris did a great job. Uh, he came up from California, where he, he lives now, and um, <coughs> kind of helped us out in a bind. Uh, you know, we we kind of did this record sort of uh, on our own to begin with. The idea was to release it ourselves, and so we were kind of just scraping together whatever favors and help and um, what little money we could. And we did a, a Kickstarter campaign that um, helped fund the whole thing and um chris made it all kind of feasible and uh and he came up and, and did an amazing job and spent about three weeks with us i'd say something like that mm-hmm. all told excellent yeah that guy has good ears mm-hmm. and good, yes. good knob twiddling fingers does he get very much involved with the process in terms of the songs themselves or is he more just kind of gets out of the way and gets gets the recording done I don't know much about his style. I feel as like a producer. he he puts in his two cents. He's really, uh, for being a really hyper guy, he's um, really relaxed in the way that he worked, at least with us. Mm-hmm. Um, he he's definitely in natural element in the studio. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and he he definitely put in his two cents on ideas of, you know, um, especially in the overdub process and things like that. Um, yeah, but and Very as far good. as getting he's, sounds, for yeah. sure. He's very laid back. He was super fun to work with. Laid back is good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but attentive. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. Not too laid back. Yeah. Um, so in terms of the record coming out, it's coming out on February 11th on Sergeant House. What are your plans? I, I would assume there's touring in the works. Dana? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we go on tour. You're in charge of this, apparently. <laughs> I got to say something, I guess. <laughs> um, we go on tour in March with Russian Circles and Ken Mode. And... Uh, we're just going part of the tour uh, down the West Coast and mm-hmm. through the Midwest ish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That's a very logical band for you to tour with. That should be a good yeah. time. And you're having your record release party here in Seattle yeah! on the first of the month, the first of February. I'm very much looking forward to that. So come out to that, y'all. Seek and Destroy is putting that on. Um, how about that's enough chit chat and let's get back to the rocking. Okay. Yay. All right, you're listening to Helms Lee on KEXP's Seek and Destroy. I mean, the counter just gonna start. Eyeballs is. Oh, I'm gonna tap. Okay. Let's make it easy.
You've been listening to Helms Ali playing here in the KEXP studios. The new album, Sleepwalking Sailors, is out on Sergeant House on February 11th. And KEXP and Seek and Destroy are extremely proud to be presenting their record release party on Saturday, February 1st at Numos with Survival Knife, Bali Girls, and Sand Rider. Thanks so much for coming by, you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Always lovely to have you here. My name's Hannah Levine. You've got to tune to Seek and Destroy only here on KEXP 90.3 FM, Seattle.